Hello, good day, and welcome back to NAT. So in this video, I want to revisit security. And the reason why is I want to show you a simple way in which you can manage your authentication to multiple NAT server or NAT installation. If you go to the section on security, um, if you remember, we talked about how to do um, username and password credential. And today, what I'm going to show you is, oh, we're going to extend that a little bit to use something called account in that. So I encourage you to reread this and definitely to click on accounts and read about accounts and why that's important. We're not going to do things like import and export. Those are other capabilities you have in that about, you know, how do you share um, you know, uh, messages and subjects um, and streams between accounts, we're not going to get that fancy. Um, we're simply going to look at, you know, some of the benefits of using context and then also what does accounts give you? All right. So um, another thing you might want to um, check out is the um, with on the jet stream configuring NAT and configuring jet stream, you'll want to go and revisit that because once you start using accounts with Jetstream, there's a little bit more you have to do, and that is explained in this section. So I encourage you to go read that, but I'll just show you. Here I am in my episode 16 directory, and the only thing I have is my NATS configuration file. And we can see that all I have is Jetstream um, currently enabled. So let's just start up NATS server with this configuration, and we can see we started with Net Jetstream. Okay, so that's fine. Um, nothing new there. So the first thing we want to do is add um, authentication. Is we're going to simply look at just adding um, the user A with the password A. And of course, we can reload our um, NAT server configuration by sending the signal to reload. And you'll see it says here reloaded, and now we have authorization with the username and password. And um, of course, now if we try to connect using this username or password, it wouldn't work. And so if we try to do NAT, let's say stream list minus A, we see we have an authentication violation. And the reason for that is if we do NAT and we do context and do LS, we'll see that we have this context called local, and it has a star here to mean that it was selected. So what exactly is a context? So think of a context as the set of configuration that you need to connect to a NAT server. And so what I can do is say um, that's context edit, and I'll say local context. And if we look at what's in here, you'll see is the description. It sees the URL to that NAT server, and so this is the NAT server that's running on my machine. But notice, username is empty and password is empty, and that's fine for when we have no authentication. But now we do have a, a, a authentication, so I really should put a username and password in here. And so if I do this, and then now I try to rerun that command where I had the stream. Now you can see no stream defined, but I don't have the authentication error anymore. Okay. Just rerun that. So that's one of the things you can do with context. And so if we do NAS context, you can see that oh, we have all these different commands we can do. We can list context, so it lists no context. We can remove a context. We can select which context is the default, which means the one we use without having to type username and password. We can get info on a context, right? So we can say not context info and let's say local, for example. And you can see the description, the host, and username um, and password. And you can see where that context configuration file is stored. You can edit the configuration file directly, but you could, as you can see, NATS has a shortcut for that by typing edit, and it's just going to pick up the correct path and file. So, But you can see save. Um, it updates or creates a context, and we're going to use save in a, a minute. Uh, of course, you can validate one or all of your context. So i just show you how we edit um, the existing context we had called local. And so if I go back here, I have context. I type list, you can see I have several contexts and the local one is the one that's selected. And that's the one I was able to change. So let's just quickly return to our configuration file here. And as you know, that with authorization section, you can have multiple 
users. And so you just create a user object and then you put it inside of a list. And so you can have multiple users now. So here I have user A and B. So what I can do is, let's clear this up. And so I can do is say in that context, I can say save and I can say user underscore A, for example, to create a new context for user A. And notice by default, it's pointing to the local server. That's all it knows and that's fine. Now, of course, when you go to create a save a context, um, if we do help, you can see that's how you can use minus minus select. And why is that important? Well, I mean, of course, you can provide a description too. Because if I do ls again, you can see I still have my local context as the one that's selected, even though I just created a new one. So when you create a new context, it doesn't automatically select it. But you can do both at the same time if you wanted to by saying save. And you can say user B, for example, and then select. All right, so it selected that new context, but it tried to connect to that immediately and it failed. So that's why I have this validation um, error. But if I were to do NATS context list, we'll see that oh, I did create the context and it was selected B. So I can, of course, edit that context. So I use a context B. And we can now say that oh, my user, for example, and of course, I can put in um, B username and password. And we talked about plain text password and using bcrypt password before, so I'm not going to review any of that. So you know to do that already using that server password command to generate encrypted password um, or assaulted password. Um, and so now if I do not stream this, um, we can see, oh, it says authorization failed. Well, the reason it failed is not only did I change the user, um, the configuration file, but I did not reload it. Remember, I added this new user B, but I did not reload. And so it doesn't know anything about that user. So um, if I need to, I have to say NAT server and then send the signal to reload. And so now when I do this, now you can see that that works. So as you can see, you can have multiple authentication or multiple um, user cr credential, and you can manage them through this context. And because you can specify the URL, you can also have connection to other NAT servers. But that's not all. There's this idea of an account. So why is account important? Let me just show you something. So let's just now add this section to our NAT configuration file called account. And then we'll see that oh, within accounts, we have an account called Team A. Now, Team A could be anything you want. It could be the HR, it could be DevOps, it could be Developer A, it could be Dev Team A, whatever you want, right? So within accounts, there is an account. And each account object is keyed or indexed by the name of that account. Um, within account, um, object, you can have users and you can also have imports and exports. And for imports, you can say, I'm going to import a set of streams or services from other accounts, or I'm going to export streams and services to other accounts. But we're not going to do any of that. We're just going to stick with accounts and users. And so now we don't need this authorization section because we have accounts into which our users are grouped. So here we go. And so let's clean up, let's reload our configuration. And now um, let's do NAT stream plus minus A. And you can see what it says now, could not list stream, jet stream not enabled for accounts. So immediately we see something that's interesting about accounts is even though NAT has jet stream enabled, uh, the service um, for the service, that service, this account itself, you can say that all certain accounts don't have the capability of using streams. Now they can still be able to do basic NATs, which is you know publish and subscribe to subjects. But remember, streams allow you to persist the messages, and you may not want Team A to be able to. Um, persist messages. And even when you do enable Jetstream for them, you might still want to restrict how much data 
they use to um, they can use. So how do you enable NAS per account? Well, within account, you say chat stream, and then you can say enable. Now, if you want to do more interesting configuration, you can do stuff like that and set the maximum size and this sort of thing. But we're not doing any of that, right? So all we want to do is able to say enable. And now if I go back here and I reload this configuration, now let's clean up. And now when I try to list stream, you can see no stream listed. And so, by the way, let's just check again, NAS context ls, and you can see I'm using user B from account A, right? Because remember, I have used A and B in team A. So if I were to create a stream, so that's stream add, and let's add the order stream, and let's give it subjects, I think. Um, let's give it, um, let's see, orders that US, for example. And file, yeah, blah, blah, blah. We just select all the defaults and a little message roll up, this, that, that. And so now I successfully cleared my stream. I clear stream. And now if I list stream, you can see I have the order stream. Now, what I can do is say NATS and I can do like something like um, publish to orders and, you know, sleep. And I publish some messages, um, and you can see the messages are going in there every two seconds. I could do it a little bit faster. Let me do take out the sleep time, and then just do something like that, right? And so number of messages, I can stop it. And of course, if we do not stream ls, and we can see that oh, we have 24,000 messages in the stream. Again, keep in mind, I'm using the user account B. All right, so I said that all putting um, users within account give you some a nice benefit, some nice benefits, but one of them is what I'm gonna show you next. So not only were we able to say that our user, this team has the ability or not to use Jetstream, but let's create another account. And so this account, we'll call it team B, for example, or it could be, you know, like the HR group. And we'll give them the ability to use Jetstream. And this time, we'll say that our users here, um, user C, and then user D. Very creative. And so now I could come back here. And let me just close this up a little bit. Doesn't matter. Jetstream is running. So let's clear. Let's do NAT server. Let's reload our configuration. And it reloads everything. No error there. And Remember, let's just review that stream list. As this user, I can see the stream and I created the stream. Now, which user are we talking about? NAS context list, we're talking about user B. Let's create another context and we'll call it user C, for example, and we'll select. And of course, we have authentication violation because user C require username and password and we, do, we don't have that. Okay, so let's just edit that user, user C. And now I'm going to provide user C. All right, so now if we do NAS LS again, I will see user C from account HR, they're selected. So what about if I do NAS stream list this time? No streams listed. I can even do minus A to see if there are any system stream and no streams. So what NATS is allowing you to do is to support multi-tenancy with this idea of an account. And this is really cool and very easy because now um, you can create an account for a set of applications or per application, and you can just say, okay, I know that traffic or the data is isolated from anything else. So as users see now, I can say NATS stream add, I can add subjects again, and it could be with the same configuration or anything different. It doesn't matter. They're completely isolated. And so if I do not publish and I do you know that and then control C, I stop notice cleanup, not stream list. And when I list this, I have nine thousand something messages. If I were to say not 
context select and then let's go to user A for example belongs to account to team A and then now when I do stream list oh, um, compilation oh maybe I need to update um, account A I did not give the username and password um, that was one we created and didn't give a username and password so A A okay so when I do list now notice 24,000 messages. Even though the streams have the same name, it doesn't matter. And that is using the idea of accounts to keep them isolated. So in a way, you can think of accounts as the high level thing on which streams are grouped and therefore they're able to be kept separately. Now, if you want messages from one account to be able to go to another um, account or user in different accounts to be able to send and receive messages from another account that's where you use the import and export and then they can of course supply and reply and all this other stuff i didn't want i don't want to cover that part of it because for the most part if you're getting into that sort of complexity you should definitely read the documentation but i think this is good enough for you to be able to understand how you can use context and then the benefit of having accounts um, either for me to deploy your own simple applications and so on. All right, that's it. I'll end it here. I hope you learned something. Please let me know in the comments below how you would use something like this ability to have multiple users and accounts. And if you're using NATS to build any application right now, or you're thinking about application you can build with NATS, please let me know. If you're not a subscriber and you've reached this far in the video, please consider being a subscriber. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for sticking with me and for coming back. Really appreciate it. Can't thank you enough. Take care. See you in the next video. Be safe. Bye.